Here we go. How are we doing? Same as always. That bad, huh? Pokey religions and ancient weapons are no match for a good blast at your side, kid. Let us go inside where we can discuss business over a drink. One conversation anyway. This place can be a little rough. Not good. I don't like this. This is madness. Would you join me for a little refreshment? Everyone's invited, of course. I think you overestimate their chances. No, not really, no. Listening. You will never find the more wretched hive of scum and villainy. We must be cautious. What's up, everybody? My name is Joey, and you're listening to. <laughs> <laughs> I almost said Collector's Hut. I thought you were going to say Retro Zap. Honest to God. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're listening to Brews and Blasters. RetroZap.com's free-ranging discussion about all things Star Wars. With me today is my co-host and buddy, Chris Dalton. It's a trap. What's up, guys? It's not. A, it's not a trap. No. <laughs> he's very excited here. He's he's very very excited. He's running around. It's it's crazy. We're off to a good start, man. <laughs> yeah, we're off to a real good start. Uh, delicious. What do you uh, speaking of that? What are you drinking tonight? I'm drinking Coors Light. Yeah. Breakfast of Champions. Oh, delicious. I'm uh, I'm partaking in some rye whiskey. Uh, that, it looks good, man. Oh, it, it's delicious. A little Sazerac. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, get a little... Smell this. Wow. <laughs> Singes the nostrils. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's it's a great winter drink. I love it. I love I love rye whiskey. That'll keep you warm. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Man, so today is uh, December 18th. And you know what that means. One year. One year. Until Star Wars The Force Awakens. Thank God. Yeah. So, pretty big. What do you, what do you think? Well, I uh, I follow the countdown, the Star Wars countdown Me too. to this. And I remember seeing like 500 or 400. And I, yeah. I like wrote to him. I was like, hey, when I'm looking at it, it doesn't seem that far away. But now that you see 365, it's like... Oh my god. Yeah, like, it's setting in. Like, now it is. Now it's the countdown. We're getting the first trailer. Things things are, uh, like, unrolling here. Yeah. Now, like, I, all I can think of is when we were back in uh, 2012, October 2012, and it just it got announced in 2015. It was so far away. Yeah. You're like, oh my god, am I, am I even going to live till 2015? I have to make sure I stay alive. Yeah. Like, <laughs> what's gonna happen you know uh, so many things can happen between now and then I, I need to make sure that i that i that i survive until this movie it's so far out and and the 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 days turn into weeks and the weeks turn into months and now we're we're, we're days away from it flipping the calendar to 2015 and uh just think about it and then then we got jj abrams at the end of 2012 so and we're still we're still pretty far out right by that time and after that, we moved to 2013. Not a lot happened as far as Episode 7 was going on. Right? What year? 2013? 2013. Not much happened. Well, when was... um? Yeah, that was a year without Star Wars. Yeah, that was it. That was the year Star Wars went away for a little while. Took a break. Yeah. The but, end, but the it end was of the like... Clone Wars. And uh, but, uh, yeah, where a bunch of things got canceled. Yeah. The end of the Clone Wars, and not much on the Episode Seven front. Right, it was like the end of the Clone Wars, and then like, hey guys, just uh, dwell on this. Episode Seven, 
I'm, yeah. I'm sorry, still saying it. The Force Awakens. Yeah. And Rebels. So it was like, oh man, when are we going to see this stuff? Exactly. We were wondering about it. And then 2014, it, it start, the trickle started. Yeah. So we, we had did, a whole year to ponder about it. Yeah. We, we had a long time. So now we're, we're flipping the corner. We're less than a year away. We've come so far. I, uh, I want to bring you back to um, what you said about, like, am I going to make it? Yeah. Now, I don't know if it's messed up for me to say this, but that's what I was thinking. I need to stay alive. I said it first. Yeah. So. <laughs> for, like, I, I always think about it. Like, yeah. I need to stay safe and I need, healthy. <laughs> I, need to, I need to drive well. I yeah. need to make sure I'm not in any accidents. Yeah. I need to make sure, like, I take care of myself. I'm, I'm eating healthy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I get nervous. I get nervous. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that, that ended briefly, too. <laughs> there we go. Okay. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, no, it's funny that you said that because I like I was literally talking to my girlfriend's uh, uncle about that. <laughs> and I, I was like, he's like, oh, you were really excited. I'm like, I'm just trying to stay like well until then. <laughs> I'm just keeping healthy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Chris, how you been? Ah. <laughs> stressing yeah. yeah keeping my stress levels down though because i, I want to make sure i'm okay for december 18th yeah 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 so a year a year from now you know it's it's, it's the evening mm-hmm. we're gonna be well, we probably would have already seen it we would have seen the midnight before oh yeah midnight show yeah yeah we're, we're there mm-hmm. i might not leave if they if they play a second one right after i'll, I'll be there till 5 a.m how many times will you see it in just the theater, back, just back to back. In the in the theater, I think I might, I might go back back to back if I can. I would like to do back to back, but I know I'm I'm definitely going to see it a couple of times. Yeah, ab- maybe absolutely. a few. Yeah, d- I'm definitely going to see it multiple times. Mm-hmm. When I was younger, it was more like uh, I don't know if I want to waste the money on on seeing it. I'm a, I'm a college kid, and I, I have a choice. Before in the original trilogy, I, my parents took me to see it. That was it. Yeah. And then you had to wait and remember and look at look at books and things. Yeah, it takes you back to when it was like, hey, you can pick one figure and there's like <laughs> six and you're like, oh, man. Yeah, exactly. So I am very, very excited for episodes, uh, episode seven, The Force Awakens, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to go uh, as many times as I can. Yeah. You know what uh, got me even more excited? What's that? You know, um, I know on a lot of things that we heard, J.J. wanted to bring it back. He was building a lot of things, you know. And built, I, him, built a Millennium Falcon. Right, built a Millennium Falcon built, at built, X-Wings. Built a lot of sets. And it was released that Mark Hamill was playing with BB-8 there. You're right, BB-8. It's a real thing. It's, it's an actual robotic it's remote it's control. Not, it's not even CGI. Yeah, that blew my mind, man. It blew my mind. I'm, I want... That was probably one of the most exciting, like, little articles that I read about it. In a year from now, will we have a BB-8 just running around? Oh, my God. Imagine yeah. that. Because if, if it can be done, it will be done, and it will be here. If they're going to mock it something like strong... You know something? You know how when the Phantom Menace rolled around and we got sneak preview figures? Uh-huh. I, I know we only got, like, two. No, no, we got three. I'm sorry. Which ones did we get? Do you remember? Yep. We got the Battle Droid on, like, the speeder. Yeah. We got Mace Windu, and then we got... Oh, no, I'm sorry. We got two. And the, I was thinking of that robot that they added into the special edition for A New Hope. You know how it's like... Yeah, you, you see in 97. Yeah, yeah. It was like a womp rack, and then it, he was like picking up like a pipe or something. Yeah, really really important. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah. Uh, yeah, a sneak preview figures would be cool, Didn't right? The, wasn't the sneak preview figure for episode one, wasn't it the, the, the pilot? What's his name? I'm drawing a blank. No, Mace Windu was a meal away, and then they had that battle droid on that speeder. Okay. I'm sure but if we're, was, if we're was, wrong, uh, let us know. <laughs> yeah. Well, I know for a f- because I, I got those two. Okay. Um, I'm sure you did. But I I, uh, I, I I think we might get some uh, sneak preview figures. I hope so. Or That'd one. Be great. Yeah, or one. One year from now, we we, we will have already seen it by, the, by today. Yeah. And hopefully have a remote control BB-8. Yeah, that would be great. I, I, how? How does it move? How is the head attached? Well, before... Uh, we, we had known it was a real figure. I, I was wondering if it was like electronically connected through through magnetics, like it was just resting on top of a spinning ball magnetically, and like held in held in place with like a, a centrifuge in, in the in the middle of the ball, and uh, the, the electronics were communicated magnetically. Like 
really cutting edge stuff. But now that I know it's a real figure and it's really running around a, a Pinewood Studios, there has to be like something in the middle, and both sides of the ball are moving independently. Mm-hmm. So, oh, uh, I yeah. gotcha. Yeah, I've seen that before. So it, that that must be what it is. That it's just exciting. That it's really cool just to know that it's it's actually there. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Mark Hamill was playing with it. Yeah. <laughs> I, w- I would have loved to have seen him just... Me too. I, you know, I was waiting to see, like, all those articles and all the talk about it. I was like, where are the pictures? Like, I thought maybe for sure we would get a picture. It'll all come out in time. Oh, yeah. Be patient. Yeah. Right when yeah. the movie's out, maybe he'll just start tweeting pictures from, like, the set. Oh, my gosh. J.W. That'd... Rensler's making of episode seven. That would be awesome. I can't wait. It'll happen one day. They have to get through the prequels first. So... Chris, I don't know if you heard the news, but Yoda is returning. I sure did. <laughs> and I'm really excited about it. Are you now? With a very familiar name. Frank Oz. Yes, Frank Oz. The, the original. Master himself. The genuine article. The Jedi Master himself. Except no substitutes. Well, well Tom Kane. He's, I wouldn't call him a substitute, though. I wonder how he feels. I, mean, I think Tom Kane has had his time. I'm. Let's put it this way: If I was him, I, you know, I would just be like, "Good, Tom." Tom like, K- yeah, Tom Kane has always been uh, respectful and uh, um, reverent of Frank Frank Oz. Yeah. So I don't think there's any hard feelings there at all. I wouldn't worry about that. Right. So so Frank Oz is is coming back. He's going to be on Star Wars Rebels, uh, playing the disembodied voice of, of Master Yoda. Yeah, it's going to be really cool. And uh, they also said that like Frank Oz's game. For like just re- like repraising the role of Yoda with even like a standalone film, that would be. I, who said that? An article I read. I've oh, been okay. reading a lot of stuff about it. <laughs> oh, good for you. Now, I see. The thing is, I don't know if it's like if that's true or not. Yeah, I don't know if it's canon. <laughs> yeah, if it's, if it's a canon article. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, but um, I yeah, uh, you know, I bet you Frank Oz listening to someone play his character for. Six years? I don't think Franco has heard it, to be perfectly honest. He didn't know about the Clone Wars until he was approached for an interview. Really? Yeah, he was like, oh, I, I didn't even know what was going on. It's That's hard to believe. I know he's a busy guy, but I mean, do you think like in the back of his head is like, hey, what are they up to? Well, no, uh, Star Wars isn't his main focus in life. He's done a lot of things. And yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't think, I just don't think it's, it's on his radar, like every every movement that Star Wars is making. Well, I'm sure that he gets a lot of fan mail, and I'm sure he probably got some pictures. Well, maybe afterwards, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, I I mean, I just know, like, I don't know, speaking for, like, myself, like, if Mm -hmm. I made a voice and was the puppeteer and brought this character to life, and then somebody else was doing the voice, like, I would have been like, I I miss this. Like, that's my guy, you know? I could see that, yeah. You know, like, I'm sure you form an attachment to something, you know? Well, you know you know what Yoda said about attachments? Yeah. <laughs> He's not a fan. <laughs> not a fan at all. Uh, but yeah, super excited. Frank Oz is returning. So who do you think is going to hear a Yoda speaking across the, the galaxy? Uh, Kane and Ezra. I, I, read, well, I read that somewhere, right? You think both of them going to hear it? I wonder how, in, in in what way. Like, how is he going to get in touch with them? Well, the radio. You just tune in, right? Yeah. Like, hey, uh, what's going on on Dagobah? Is it a direct contact? Do you think, do you think the, they're, they're talking back and forth? Or do you think, like, maybe they're... The, again, that, well, man, that ended real quickly. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Path of the Jedi, right? Path of the Jedi is the episode name. Yeah. And I'm wondering... I don't know if they're going to pick it up as if maybe Yoda's meditating and speaking to whoever can listen. Like, it's a one-way message, or maybe they're they're back and forth communicating, like, who are you? No, who are you? I, I don't know. I'm Yoda. Who are you? Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. Because Yoda didn't do any broadcasting after Revenge of the Sith. Kenobi did it. Well, bro- I, was, I was using it as a larger term, but broadcasting... That's a very it's a, it's a weird term to use. I mean, you're you're basically meditating through the force. Well, no, like when he sent the distress message. Well, that's different. Right. It's yeah. not using the force, but Right. No, Kenobi. 
Yeah, Kenobi. Like, like when we got, um, you know, the distress call, like in Rebels. Yeah, that, there's a lot of mystery around that. I'm wondering if that is the message from the Jedi Temple, or if that was the, the signal that was picked up later. It was a different message, because the message that was given to us in A New Dawn is different than the message that is in Star Wars Rebels. Yeah, I, I uh, did not read Dawn. Um, a New Dawn? Yeah, I... I I know nothing about it. Good book. You should you should check it out. Is it how uh, Kanan and Hera met? Yeah, yeah. Is, how that, they is that how it is? And yeah. I, I mean, I'm assuming there's a love interest or some bit. kind of like yeah, attachment. I, yeah, there's, there's because something I, there. I, get, I get that vibe. Does she calls him like love? She does. Yeah, you know. And uh, they're trying to downplay it on the show, but uh, Freddie Prince Jr. has said it's not will they or won't they. It's that they already have. Whoa. <laughs> nice. Yeah, so that, that, I guess that's already in their past by the time of the, the show. Absolutely. Yeah, we'll edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, Rebels at Celebration. The whole cast. Really? Yeah. That got released um, maybe a week ago. Yeah? Yeah. They're all going to be there. Which, you know something, I'm not surprised no, I mean... It's Celebration, it's in California, it's... They're probably like, yeah, I'll take a drive down. They're the number one property right now until episode seven. Right, right. Of course, yeah, they'll, they'll definitely be there. Yeah. So I'm, I'm really excited. Uh, that's going to be an, a really cool panel, and uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's going to be the same panel with them releasing some footage from uh, season two. Yeah, I thought that was a... Uh, uh, yeah, that would be great. I can't wait to see season two. Yeah. It's going to be cool. It's going to yeah. be really good. How many more episodes do you think we got left? For this this season? Yeah. There were 16 episodes total. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, man. Oh, are we... How many are we on now? Eight? So is it just eight and eight? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that that's what it should be. And I'm glad that the break is very short, too. Like, you can... We can actually watch Path of a Jedi earlier. Path of the Jedi. Path of the Jedi. What did yeah. I say? Path of a Jedi. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, you can watch it earlier on Watch uh, Disney XD. Are they going to release the, that early? The 29th of December. No way. Yeah, that Monday, the Monday before. So we get a little <sighs> week early sneak preview. That's a little over a week away now, really. Yeah, I know. That's why when I seen that, I was like, whoa. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I thought I had more time to get to get caught up on my uh, episode <laughs> summaries. Oh, you have to just watch them all. I get a blast through. Oh, I've seen them oh, all. Oh, you're up to date. Yeah. Okay. On, on Rusher's app, I'm, I'm trying to do commentaries of every episode, but I'm, I'm behind. So I got to I gotta do some... I got to catch up to... Well, uh, a lot of stuff going on. I gotta, yeah, there is. There's a lot of things. A lot of things going on. We're gonna catch up to that a little bit later. Uh, what I've been doing <laughs> recently, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, but uh, you know, Christmas is right around the corner. So isn't the segue <laughs> 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 coming around the corner? Uh, <laughs> let's talk about Christmas and let's talk about Star Wars. So, what is your? Uh, what are some memories? Oh. You got I mean, well, one that really stands out is um, in the early '90s, late '90s. I'm not really sure exactly what year um, when they re-released the AT-AT Walker or the AT-AT, and um, I wanted it so bad. And there was a present wrapped underneath my tree that looked exactly like that. And um, you know how there was like a couple of different um, sound effects that were on there. There was like uh, the blast is it's a uh, the shield generator is down. You may start your landing. So they say like, that? The ad ad says that? Oh, yeah. Nice. So I stuck my finger right through the wrapping to press the buttons. <laughs> and I was like, oh, thank God. It was like a breath of fresh air. I'm like, I'm getting an AT-AT walker. And I'm, 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 I'm thrilled. Because, you know, it has, um, you know when Luke shoots that, um, like the wire? Yeah, the to- not the tow cable, but... Just a grappling hook thing. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it has that, like, an attachment on the bottom. Oh, that's so, awesome. So, like, I had Luke Skywalker in, like, X-Wing pilot suit yeah. gear. And uh, when it's all, like, put together, it just looks so awesome, you know? Yeah. It does. It's it, very cool. I've yeah. seen that. So, what about yours? Man, I don't have a ton. It's kind of weird, but I don't have a ton of Christmas memories with, with growing up with Star Wars. I feel like maybe I got them in the for my birthday, or maybe I got them... Over the summer or something, but I don't, I don't. Maybe I was too young to remember too. I don't, I don't remember a ton about about Christmas. I, I got the Rancor. Oh hell yeah! When Jedi came out, 
that was a big Christmas gift. That's awesome. Yeah, I got job. I got Jabba's palace set. Really? Yeah, I got that too. So that was pretty awesome. Do you still have that stuff? I don't think so. No, I think it's gone. You never know. It might be up there somewhere, like in might the attic. Might be in the attic. I, I, I have a, I have a lot of things in the attic, but I'm not. I don't think I have those. Unfortunately, uh, I wish I did though. Man, I, I, I wrecked that that rancor. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> I played with that thing so hard. That's awesome. Yeah, that thing didn't just eat Jedi <laughs> and uh, Gamorrean guards. That thing was eating He Man. He was eating. Uh, he was eating GI Joe. He was just busting through all sorts of different properties. Yeah, just eating whatever. That's awesome. Oh, that thing was the best. Well, the GI Joes would probably fit like perfect. Yeah. They all got eaten. Oh yeah, He Man. Yeah, those poor, poor Gamorrean gods. <laughs> just the one, Ola. So many went down, and <laughs> many before them. It's funny how he sc- he did. He actually screamed like a pig. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He screamed like I thought he would. Yeah, yeah. That it made sense. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, I always wondered. Do you think they got the rancor? As like a baby, like hey, hey Jabber, I brought you a pet, and he's like, oh, oh, cool. How big does he get? Oh man, oh, no, not that much. Don't worry, yeah. I'm yeah. gonna go. Do you have to feed him a lot? No. All right, well, we'll just put him right below me. <laughs> and then he's like, wow, he just keeps growing. Yeah, he had like no room to move around. No, no. He walked out of that room, and he's just like, okay, I'm in a slightly smaller room. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> imagine how small that room was. It basically, he was able to take two steps. That was his entire life. He probably just sat down all day. That's that's really kind of sad. It is sad because he's a great, great creature, you know, great yeah. beast. Amazing. I, I love the Rancor. I hope they, they use it more in The Force Awakens. Ooh, yeah. Everyone forgets about the Rancor. Right. Yeah. I mean, I really do. I mean... I. It's not canon anymore, I don't think, but remember like in The Force Unleashed when like they were running wild? Oh, it was awesome. That, that was the best. That was a great level. Yeah. And yeah. they were all like painted and stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What was the planet called? Fel- that was Felucia. Felucia, But yeah. that, that's not canon anymore either. It's not? No, because in the Clone Wars they went to Felucia and it was totally different. Oh, gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, no, it was really cool. Hey, um, would if the Rancor was real, would you want one? Yeah. Me too. It, it's better than my pet monster. Remember that? Yes, the blue guy? <laughs> the blue guy. Yeah. Yeah, it would wow. be better. Only my pet monster eats people. Rancor. Yeah. My pet Rancor. Yeah. <laughs> Having a bad day at work? My pet Rancor. My pet Rancor. Oh, I got to go home. Feed the Rancor. Feed the Rancor. I got to go take my Rancor to the vet. Do you think they make like a teacup Rancor? No. Like a, like a pot belly like little uh like a little <laughs> rancor? Nope. I don't I don't think just so. Just full blown rancor. Yeah, just like twenty five feet tall. They should just do a standalone movie, The Rancor. It would be like Milo and Otis, like the incredible <laughs> like the incredible journey, like no no people are in it at all. <laughs> it's just him like where what on whatever planet in a jungle or wherever and yeah. he's just eating stuff. A prequel era rancor movie. How the Rancor got to Jabba's palace? Oh, done. That's it. Yeah, bingo. Boba Fett. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure it involves Boba Fett in some way. How did the Rancor keeper get so attached? How did he get so fat? I don't know. Maybe he was eating the food with the Rancor. <laughs> Maybe he's like, save me an arm. Yeah. Maybe the Rancor only likes lean meat. Maybe. So if you got like kind of chubs, he wouldn't be as appealing to the. Yeah, Rancor. but he sucked down that Gamorrean god. Well, that's true, too. Licking his uh, chops. Bacon, man. I mean, really. Mm. Good piece of ham right there. Yeah. Good green eggs and ham. Green eggs and ham. Yeah. Green ham and green. eggs. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but he's awesome. And why is he like in a, It looks like he's in like shackles. Well, yeah. I mean, if not, he'd probably just eat Jabba, too. If he was hungry. I bet yeah. you he's like any other like... Any other pet, you he know, probably like, jump. Yeah. Oh yeah. Or pull himself up with his long arms. Yeah. Bad day for Ula if that happened. Yeah. Not for nothing. How did they get him down there? It must have been as a baby. It had to be. Had to be. He knows nothing else. It's like an indoor cat. He has no idea <laughs> what's yeah. outside that palace. Yeah. Either there's a back door they they brought him in on. Oh yeah. Like the back of the Boston Garden or something. You know. I wonder if they like knocked him out. And then, like, made some kind of flatbed and, like, tugged him over there on the, like, uh, the sail barge. 
Yeah, they, they could have done that. I just this like so we're, much sympathy. We're, we're really getting into the logistics of this. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, <laughs> even though he was like a ferocious beast, that noise he makes when he dies oh, crushed no. me. It's terrible. The noise that the rancor keeper made was yeah. even worse. Well, it, it's very similar to like a dog. Like getting hurt. Oh yeah, that was the worst. Sad. Yeah, I had. I was like sad. I mean, I've I've had a bone stuck in my mouth that way. Yeah, it hurts. Yeah, well, it hurts. There. Or when you're eating popcorn, it gets wedged in between your teeth. My blood is red. I bleed. Yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> <laughs> we're the same. Yeah. <laughs> Poor guy. Yeah, I. I yeah, you know, Jedi is weird that way. It really made you like feel bad. Yeah, like the same way you felt bad for the Ewok, you felt bad for the Rancor. Oh my god! Yep, well, we yeah. just went there. Yeah, <laughs> I'm I'm trying to keep on the rank the Rancor here. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, there is a lot of sad moments. Like you know, Jabba getting strangled to death. That's sad. I didn't feel that sad that time. I like Jabba. I know you do. What about but... all those innocent people? Just they just came along for the ride, like, hey buddy, we're gonna go uh, drop some people off at the Salad <laughs> Pit, and they're like, okay, I'll come. It's a party. Yeah, it's a party. Yeah, it's a party. You know, yeah. Max Rebo Band. They've probably been like around for a while. Yeah, it, it is kind of a shame the Max Rebo Band got got murdered. Yeah, but what are you gonna do? I mean, that, they they knew who they were taking the the job from. Yeah, it was a risk that they were probably willing to take. They're gangsters. They're gangsters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They know what they're getting themselves into. They had to. Yeah. Everyone knows who Jabba the Hutt is. Yeah. The Hutt's are gangsters. Yeah. They knew it before the, before the OT. Yeah. Throughout the galaxy, they knew. Yeah. So you're taking... And you know what? That was your time to fight if if you were not on the side. Yeah. You know, good point. Think about how many other gangsters were on that barge. Yeah. They could they could have fought. They yeah. could have fought alongside the, the, the Rebel Alliance. Bosk was there. Bosk was there? Yeah. Bosk was in uh, um, the sail barge. I never saw Bosk on the sail barge. Yeah. Is he in the movie? Uh huh. Uh, I'm not breaking out the movie this time. I'm not going to do that. No, I, um, I will bet you whatever you want on that one. All right. We're going to, we're going to look for this. Yeah. And you don't have to look closely. He's like broad daylight right there. No way. Yeah. Or either that, it's, I don't know if they're pulling the same thing that they did with Greedo, like on an off screen <laughs> shot. It was a, another Rodian. Another Greedo, exactly the same. Yeah, yeah, with the same clothes. No, I think there's only one Trandoshan, man. Right, exactly. Yeah. That's why it's him. He has like his flight suit on, and it's Bosk. All right. I, I, I never knew that. Blew, this is blowing my mind. Yeah. That, that was one thing that I loved so much about uh, Jabba's Palace is all the creatures. They're all there. I think, is oh, Dengar there? No. Uh, Dengar's not on the ship, but is he in the palace? No, I don't think so. See, Dengar's I, not on the ship either. But Bosk, all day long, he's on there. I never saw him. I'm going to have to look. Yeah. A lot of weak way. Oh, yeah. Tons yeah. of them. So, I mean, so if you were a bad guy, that was your time to fight. Yeah. Fight back. I mean, Leia spring right into action, you know? I think the movie was perfect. In yes. every way. Yeah. But getting into that, there is a lot of gangsters on there. You know what I mean? Right. And, like, it would have been cool to see, like, a good guy take a couple of hits, but then eventually get killed by the good guy. You know what I mean? Just, like, to, just to let you know that there was guys on that pod that were like, holy holy moly, these guys, like, mean business. So you wanted a good guy to get hit? Yeah, like, if, like, you know how Luke jumps on the sail barge and he starts, like, slicing and dicing? Yeah. Like, if some guy was just like, bam! Bam, bam. And then he, like, got up and was like, yeah, slice, slice. And I would have been like, whoa, like, who is that guy that got a couple shots in? Well, Luke de- got, gets his mechanical hand shot. Yeah, he gets shot. I'm talking like a like a fist. Oh, like, well, I, I always thought Boba Fett was the guy to do that, but he, he went out kind of... Yeah. He had a bad day that day. I don't, want, I don't want to go so far as to put down the Fett, but, man, I expected more from him in a fight. Han didn't even know he hit him. Boba Fett? Boba Fett? <laughs> he had no idea. He, had no, he was blind. Yeah, he was blind. Yeah, we were t- uh, we were talking about Christmas at some point. I don't, <laughs> we just got straight into Jedi. Yeah, we're, we're, we're now we're just right into Jedi. <laughs> yeah, we're in the Dune Sea right now. Yeah, are you pro the Banthas getting uh, put in there? Nothing wrong with those Banthas. I love Banthas. Yeah, who doesn't love a Bantha? They're awesome. 
And dewbacks too. I'm I'm cool with as many dewbacks as you need. Dewbacks look very calm. They look like they would be ferocious, but they look exhausted. I would love a pet dewback. Me too. Uh, yeah, forget the rancor. I'm done. Dewback. I could re- I could literally oh. chill with. Dude, I wouldn't even drive a car. <laughs> no more car. <laughs> Imagine that, like someone going down the street me. with a do back. <laughs> I'm like, hey, I'm, I'm like, you have to stop. I'm like, like yanking on the thing. It's my do back. <laughs> I feel like a bantha just wouldn't listen to you. <laughs> no, like it wouldn't move. <laughs> it's like, oh, this hairy thing. <laughs> I can't see nothing. And the tauntauns, I, I don't think they were. I think they had an attitude. Super fast. Like I, a like a bad cat, though. I think like the Tauntauns were like, you couldn't really get them to behave. I don't think they were meant for riding. No, I, I think that was more like an emergency thing. Like, we're on Hoth. We got we to gotta figure out yeah. something. This thing's alive. It just won't kill us. So, all right, let's ride it. Right. Yeah. But I, I, I do love how a Tauntaun looks, though. It's really cool. Oh, it's awesome. He has like the little T-Rex arms. I, I love them. <laughs> With a ram head. Yeah. Yeah. A little lizard, too. Yeah. yeah. I wonder, like... It, it, who came up with that design? Oh, I got the Tauntaun for Christmas, too. Yeah? Yeah, now it's all coming back to me, I guess. The, the vintage ones that you put, like, the figure right into his back? Yup. Nice. Yeah, I, I got the Tauntaun for Christmas. No, and, and it was the same design for the Dewback. You just stick the figure in. Really? I know I never had a Dewback. An I, OT, OT yeah. Dewback. No. I don't have a Dewback either. I have a Tauntaun, though. Good yeah, stuff. I, I love how they kept it simple, but at, yet it still looked amazing. It was great. Yeah. I remember... I only wanted an ad at when I was a kid. I didn't even want the Millennium Falcon. It was like that was way too far off my off my radar. It was like it was so amazing. I, I could never even think I could possess a, a, a Millennium Falcon. Right. I didn't know anyone who had a Millennium Falcon either. Yeah, me either. No, a so, vintage one. No, I, I no. no people. I, I hear you know people and collectors. They're, they're all talking about the Millennium Falcon they had. I didn't know anyone had a Millennium Falcon. Right. But I wanted the ad at. I remember seeing that in Toys R Us as a kid. That that thing was crazy. I wanted an ad. I never had it. Yeah. Well, the it always seemed like the bad guys had like super cool stuff. Yeah. Instead, I got the Ewok battle caravan w- with the skull on the front. <laughs> no, no. Just it, it was like a cart with rocks. Y- yeah, but was there a skull? I don't remember, dude. That is so collectible. It, it will blow your mind. How really? Co- yeah, dude. Oh, they go thing- for like three hundred bucks. That's gone. I've, yeah, that thing. I've, that thing was probably gone by eighty eight. I wonder if we're talking about the same thing. Maybe. How many Ewok battle wagons are there, dude? I think you had <sighs> uh, once in a blue moon. I always look for for one of those. Yeah, dude. I don't know why it's <laughs> mega collectible. I don't have it anymore. It's gone. Imagine. Like you guys probably picked it up for whatever I don't know, ten bucks, ten bucks, fifteen bucks. Toys R Us. Now yeah. it's like if you have it in package, forget it, dude. There's like bid wars going on. <laughs> wow. Yeah, the Ewok battle wagon. Who? I, I I still don't understand. Like I there there are still toys and collectibles from the seventies. Who kept your toy in a package in seventy seven? Yeah. I don't understand these people. I don't know where these toys came from. It's cra- it blows my mind. It does blow my mind. Because I'm happy I, they did, but... <laughs> I could never. As fast as it would take me to open it and then see what it is, it, the figure was already ripped out of the package. Yeah, exactly. I mean, who who is the, the part... Did they come from factories or like old storage where they weren't open? They must have. I was watching uh, when Toy Hunters was uh, still on. There was one lady... It blew my mind, man. This... This will blow your mind. There was one lady on there that she went to the store and she bought like triple of like all the original Star Wars figures that came out, right? Gave, you know, one set to her kids, put double set, mint in box, put it in a box and just put it away, dude. She was just sitting on this. Crazy. Yep. And then he went and like bought them for like a crazy amount of money. But he... She opened the box like if they just came out of the warehouse, man. Like they were crisp, <laughs> like caught it. Unbelievable. We have to go on a hunt soon. Yeah, dude, we'll go to Maine. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's go to Maine. You will really like that place. Definitely. I we, we haven't gone on a vintage Troy hunt in a few months. Yeah. So just for the audience, we every few months, Chris and I will we'll get together maybe on a Saturday rainy day, be like, hey, what do you have to? Let's go on a hunt. And it, it's not really a boat which 
figures you get. It's about the hunt for them by going to these stores, trying to find something good. Uh, one day I came up with a, a Stormtrooper from 77. Loose, but I only paid like a buck for it. Yeah, it was in a pile of figures. <laughs> yeah. So just digging through, bam, it was like mint condition out of package Stormtrooper. And the guy's like, eh, couple I don't know, a bu- couple bucks. And we're yeah. like, what? Yeah, it was like with all, it was like in the bin with the broken figures on the ground. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody must have been walking by and dropped it in. <laughs> yeah. Quote unquote dropped it. Yeah. But I love the hunt. I don't, we could have found that on eBay. Oh, yeah. Any day of the week can buy that. So, but, but the hunt is, is where it's at. You know what I found at this place in Maine? The place in Maine I'm talking about is uh, an antique place. Okay. So you just go antique and there's a bunch of tables from different vendors. And, right. You know, that's how that works. Yeah. So it was a sun catcher. Do you guys remember that? A sun catcher? Sun catcher. So okay. it, it was a metal frame of like Jabba the Hutt. With like glass in, in it and it'll it'll come through the window and... Yes, but it was the kit. So it was the metal frame. I got one of Jabba the Hutt. Oh, yeah. I remember you you could be able to... You could make those as a kid and... Oh, yeah, dude. It was yeah. awesome. So <laughs> the, it was in the package, Jabba the Hutt and Gamorrean God. And it came with all the different little plastic stuff that you pour in the frames. And you put it on a baking pan and stick it in your oven. So I was like, <laughs> you know something? I'm going to open this and actually make them. Oh, my God. And we made them. The whole house smelled like plastic. And they came out amazing. <laughs> I got to show there, you, There man. were toxins in there that no one even uh, knew would be there 30 years from now. Absolutely. Yeah. I, ha- I have to show you. You would really I like totally it. want to see. You probably shaved off years of your life. To make them. Yeah, possibly. I mean, <laughs> yeah. the whole... We had to open windows. Yeah, pure lead in that metal. <laughs> oh, yeah. The frame was probably lead. You're, yeah. You're absolutely right. <laughs> yeah, definitely lead. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> and you bake that in your, in your, yeah. in your oven. <laughs> <laughs> right on the baking sheet. <laughs> Fantastic. I put tinfoil on it. Okay, that's perfect. Man. You're all set. <laughs> you're all set. <laughs> but yeah, you find all kinds of really cool stuff like that. Like you really don't know what you're going to come across. It's probably That's people, what I love. Yeah. People clean out their attics and like, you know, their kids moved on with their life or whatever. Mm-hmm. And they're like, hey, uh, I'll rent a table for 20 bucks and put this on there. Yeah. That's how we got Hammerhead with, for four bucks. Dude, talk about vintage figures. Tons of them. Ton- oh, I can't wait. Dude, tons of them. Can't wait. And very reasonably priced. I'm talking ten bucks, five how far, bucks. How far away is this place? An hour. Oh, we gotta go. Yeah, we gotta go. Absolutely. I I haven't been there in a long time. All right, right after Christmas, we're going. Yeah, dude, you don't have to twist my arm. I really like this place. All right, man. <laughs> yeah. So Christmas. Uh, should we even keep on this topic? I don't even know. Uh, how do you How do you celebrate Christmas today? Oh, um, you eat a lot, and you and you you hang around. Your family. I meant like in regards to Star Wars. How do you bring Star Wars in? Well, I... I mean, I, I eat a lot too. Yeah. It, it's it's a good... And not not putting down the holidays and <laughs> all the other traditions. I was kind of attempting to keep on some sort of topic. I don't know. Well, um, <laughs> well you have uh, some pretty awesome ornaments. I, all new additions this year. But they're awesome. Thank you. Awesome additions. Yeah. I love the Falcon. I love that. I got the 1996 Falcon Hallmark keepsake. Guys, it's aw- it's flawless. Check it out. Yeah. I have one Star Wars ornament. It's the Clone Wars. What do you have? It's a blue ball. It says the Clone Wars on it. And then on the back, it has um, basically just like the cast. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's really like pic- cool. Pictures of them? Yeah. Oh, cool. You know, it's all like squeezed in, but it, it, it's it's really good. You oh, know, and I, yeah. every year I got to put it up. Very nice. You know? I just got a Yoda. Oh, yeah? It talks, too. Get out of here. No, it has like a motion sensor, so if you get too close oh. to the tree, it'll be like, you're a sneaker you are. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Crazy. Oh, I have to see it. Yeah. I'll, I'll show it to you after the show. And you have a Chewy? I have a Chewy. Very cool. Star Wars tree. Yeah. It, it's turned into a Star Wars tree. Don't tell anyone. That's awesome. <laughs> you, so you don't have a Star Wars tree? I don't have a Star Wars tree. That's the only ornament that I have. Really? And no other decorations? No, but I do have a like a Christmas snow globe with mm-hmm. with Yoda. Oh, nice! Yeah, that's pretty cool. And I think Vade is in, and he's like checking his list. <laughs> you know how they get like a little ridiculous around the holidays. Yeah. So I, I, well, I, you know, my mom, anything she sees Star Wars, she just grabs it. Mm-hmm. 
So that's how I ended up with that one. Yeah, so it must be the naughty list, right? It, For Vader. It must it has to be. Oh no, you know what's funny? There's actually names on. It's like Luke Naughty. Like oh! dude, it's funny. <laughs> it's funny. Lando. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we can convert him. Yeah, he did sell out his friends. He did kind of help me out. It wasn't his fault. He yeah. said that. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> you didn't you weren't listening. It's not his fault. Yeah. Well, he was probably like, I'm gonna kill you, or are you gonna tell me? Yeah. And there was still a chance to save him. Right. And he, well, he saved three quarters of love. Hmm? Yeah. He, I mean, he didn't kill him, but. Right. Yeah. All right. I, and he did save him. He did go to Jabba's house. He did. And the deal just kept getting worse. It got worse all the time. Yeah. <laughs> I, lo- I love his costume at Jabba's. Oh, it's, yeah. Like, you you know it's him. Yeah. He takes off that little plate. I'm like, oh, oh yep, there's the bottom half of your face. Right. <laughs> It's, it's so Clark Kent, Superman. Imagine if when he like went to pull it down, somebody was like, "Lando!" He's like, "Damn it!" <laughs> yeah, the, the he could have sprung the entire trap right there. <laughs> They're like, "Wait a second, Wait. Lando, Leia, C three PO, R two D two. They're all here. They're all here. <laughs> You're all here. Guys, watch out! Something, something's going down. Yeah, yeah. they could could have blown the entire thing. Yeah. All right, we're back on Jedi again. Yeah, yeah. How are we doing this? I don't know. Yeah, I didn't even watch Jedi recently. I did. Yeah, when did you watch it? Two weeks ago. Nice. Yeah. Nice. I always pop it in. Like, if I'm, like, going to bed and I'm, like, Jedi, and yeah. I'll, I'll pop it in and then I'll I'll find myself not falling asleep. That's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah. What's a good morning Star Wars movie? Oh, morning Star Wars. Like, you get the day off and, you know, you're just having breakfast. You pop it in. You know what's really odd? Yeah. Well, I don't know how odd it is. All right. I don't know if it's odd. It might be normal. It might be I feel, weird. Now, I love all six Star Wars movies equally. Mm-hmm. I do, because I love the story yeah. of them all. The saga. You know? And um, But I find myself always just juggling the original trilogy. Yeah. You know, it feels like... A great pair of jeans. Yeah. Yeah. Right. They fall. They're all broken in. You've had them forever. Maybe you, that's why. I think that's it. I've been wearing these for like 20, 15 years. They fit perfectly. Yeah. But the the new ones, they're pretty cool. They oh. look great when you wear them. You don't always wear them too much. Though. Yeah. But I, I, I do love them all equally. It's just that I find myself always going back maybe you gotta push yourself a little bit maybe you gotta get a little uncomfortable out yeah because once they're on yeah you're in it because i i i love i do love watching like the battle of geonosis i love that scene yeah. you know um kenobi and uh anakin pretty much all fighting pretty much all of episode one is amazing oh yeah dude the fight between maul qui-gon and kenobi it, it gives the, me my hair stand up on my arm. The opening fight on the trade ship cruiser when Obi Wan and uh, Qui Gon are just fighting the destroyers. Fantastic! Oh, dude, I know. Back in ninety nine, seeing just it, hearing the lightsabers again on the screen. Yeah. Whoa. When he. Whoa. When he, <laughs> I'm not doing it. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. When he puts the lightsaber right into the into the the door. Yeah. Oh, you didn't know it could do that. I didn't. And it no, was like no one melting and everything. Yeah, you didn't know it could do that. Yeah. But you're like, why didn't anyone think of that before? Yeah. <laughs> and I never seen a Jedi run that fast before. And never since. Exactly. Yeah. The old days. Yeah. The old Republic. Oh, before man. the dark times. Before the dark times. The fall of the Empire. There you go. That was I did perfect. It. I did it. <laughs> you did it. Not I bad, you. right? Oh, man. I shouldn't that... be so proud of myself. No, that was a good one. It was yeah. good, man. It wasn't bad. I enjoyed it. All right. I, I'm going to stop. We can just do it. Before you follow me on some damn fool adventure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, you do a good Kenobi. I try. You do. I work at it. You do. Yeah. So there's one last thing to talk about. Yeah. And it's pretty mind-blowing. <laughs> you think so? I think so. So uh, I'm just going to come out and say it. I have a signed book. In my possession right now, uh, signed by J.J. Abrams, that I retrieved today, this morning, from a uh, 
Well, uh, uh, I, I'm just gonna. I, I retrieved it from a chimney. Yeah, yeah. In the, Boston, this was the most far <laughs> out text that I've gotten in a long time. Yeah, it was probably one of the most far out things I've ever done. Yeah, in my life, I kind of went on a Da Vinci Code style scavenger hunt that was uh, set up by Bad Robot. If uh, if you go back uh, onto their Twitter feed over the past couple of days, they had what was called the uh, the S Search. J.J. Abrams last year wrote a book in partnership with uh, another author, uh, Doug Dorst, called S. And he, this week, they decided to bring five signed books, throw them into the world in five different cities, and they would hide them, and they would give clues in a very Da Vinci Code style fashion to lead people to this book. And about six or seven clues were released for Boston, and there were people checking and and trying to decipher them for two days. It was it, was, it went longer than they expected, and th- there were a couple of people who, who who got close, but they they by last night they they there was no one who could retrieve the book. They, no one knew its whereabouts. So all night I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm like, I'm gonna find this book. So I, I followed the clues, and you can. I'm going to be doing a write up on on RetroZap about my entire process. But I uh, I went down to uh, to MIT, which is where the clues led me, and found this signed book inside an old, unused chimney flue on the inside in one of the older buildings at MIT in Cambridge, Massachusetts, and now I have a. Uh, a signed copy of S by J.J. Abrams. Can you imagine what the percentage is? There was five <laughs> books and you got one. I can't believe it. It, it blows my mind. I mean, it, <laughs> it's, so it's almost, it's like hitting the lottery, man. No one saw this. Too. Uh, like, I, I, I'm following these clues and I'm like, I'm, I walk into the building and I see, I see one clue on the ground and I'm like, oh, then I see, it. and then I see the, the, the fireplace. I'm like, that's where it is. And I walk in and I take a look above and inside the fireplace, up above in the flue, crammed into one little corner between some wire is this book. And I'm like, this is, this is it. I retrieved it. It's mine. That's like Indiana Jones stuff. Yeah, it was. It was Indiana Jones stuff. It was crazy. I don't know. Uh, it was so weird. And I just, I take it and I leave. I'm still blown away by this. Honestly. Yeah, it's my book. Thank you, JJ. I, if you ever listen to this, which you never will, I'm sure. But uh, yeah, thank you, JJ Abrams, for the book. I, I really appreciate it. I'm, I can't wait to read it. Super cool. And guys, I have seen it. This is a true story. <laughs> well, I said I, 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 I did take the picture. I sent it on Twitter. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Very, very awesome, honestly. Like, when I, when you wrote me that text today... It, guys, <laughs> I got a text, and it was like, I got a book signed by J.J. Abrams in a chimney. I was like, what? <laughs> it, it was yeah. it, it was amazing. It's kind of, it's a hard story to paraphrase. Yeah. Well, you summed it up. Well, thank you. <laughs> and uh, just really cool, man. Yeah, it, it's a pretty cool book. Uh, there's a lot of, it's not your normal type of book. There's a lot of different type of narration that's going on in margins where people have written notes and the book is supposed to be from like the 50s but it's really not and there are like notes and postcards in it i haven't, I haven't begun even begun to check it out so i, I can't wait it's well, very exciting it looks really cool yeah all right uh let's wrap up the show what do you say what do i say i say another amazing show nope that didn't do it no <laughs> oh man Right, Chris. Another amazing show. <laughs> oh, another amazing show. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, you know, it's okay if we're humble, but we should really <laughs> should really save the praise for others, yeah. right? <laughs> no, no, never. You can tell we're satisfied. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. 
Uh, if you're if you're not mortified yet, uh, we'd like to thank you for listening <laughs> to Bruising Blasters, a uh, podcast of RetroZap.com. Uh, any feedback, you can send us at contact at RetroZap.com. We're looking for it. We want to hear from you. We'll read your emails on the show. Um, so send that in. Let us know what you think. If you have any questions, you want to set us straight, we'll take it. Chris is at Collector's Hut on Twitter. And you can find him on YouTube. Just type in the Collector's Hut, H-U-T-T. And he's posting uh, posting videos every week there on oh. his collection. Yeah, and I do a great one with uh, the Darth Vader EFX helmet. I had a lot of fun with this one. Make sure you check it out. <laughs> and I'm posting those every week as well. Maybe, maybe a few days behind. Yeah, but still, many thank yous. You're welcome, as always. Uh... If you want to find me, you can find me at uh, Joey Wong Kenobi on Twitter. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm writing on RetroZap Weekly, uh, hopefully. <laughs> Trying to get through my, uh, my Star Wars Rebels analysis, and uh, I have a couple of interesting things coming, coming as well, as far as analysis. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, I feel like RetroZap is becoming an entirely a Star Wars site, but mostly. I mean, I'm talking about the Terminator 2, I wrote a interesting timeline let me know what you think about that because uh there's some interesting ideas on there that may not be entirely conventional well chris that's a show so as always we'll say goodbye and we'll see you next week see you later guys and may the force be with you Clutch!